hello everybody welcome back to my youtube channel welcome back to my youtube channel i know my voice sounds very weird today but it's a long story if you're here if <laughs> oh my gosh if you're here for the first time welcome if you're a retaining subscriber a veteran in this channel welcome back for yet another exciting episode of risk money and insurance oh my gosh that sounds so weird but anyways today i am here on a different note but before we get into that i just want to say that you know as in as much as i have these conversations and i talk to a lot of people one thing that i've realized is the fact that these decisions are very personal um they depend on your personal circumstances where you're at in life and what your goals are at that particular point in time and funny enough what i've just been thinking about a lot is how much we have so much information how we are bombarded with so much information and as much as we are not actively absorbing that if information we have an idea as to what you know being successful looks like because we are on instagram and we're seeing other people post how they are successful in their own lives and and so today before i start this video i thought i should just make that disclaimer to say it doesn't matter you know it's all about you your own pace and your own decisions in your own life and today we are talking about to rent to buy or to rent to buy right so um this is a very interesting topic that someone on instagram asked me to talk about thank you so much for suggesting this topic and i thought that was the question i was faced with as a young professional when i started working to say do i rent do i buy do i rent to buy and the third option which is to rent to buy it's one option that a lot of people don't know about and i'm just hoping i will shed some light on that topic today and so let's let's start with comparing perhaps you know renting versus buying to say which one is like the better option for me but at the end of the day as i've mentioned it's all about you personally your personal decisions and what you prefer as an individual so when it comes to like initial costs if we're comparing the initial costs between renting and buying you find that when you're about to rent it's actually way cheaper compared to you buying why is that so when you're renting you will more likely pay the deposit and the rent upfront before you occupy the property but when you are buying the property you need to sort of pay certain things upfront for example you need to pay the deposit which normally it's advised to be you know 10 percent of the property value you need to pay the transfer duties and transfer costs which your transfer duty is a tax that you pay on your property which um you pay that if your property value is above 1 million um and and there are other things like your bond registration fees which i know like a lot of us we're not the daughters of Patrice Mutsipe, so we can't, you know, buy property in cash. So probably you're going to be financing your property via a bank um, and you will need to pay those property, you know, those bond registration costs upfront, which are a lot. We're talking um, above 20,000 here or like close to 20,000. You know, your deposit will probably be high depending on, you know, the property value that you're buying. And at the end of the day, if you compare the initial costs of renting versus the initial cost of buying the property i mean you can actually say buying a property there are high initial costs that you need to incur but then now let's talk about what happens like as the year goes annually what about the annual costs for example if you are going to be um renting you'll more probably like more likely just pay your rent which will be quite low compared to a bond installment if you are sharing that property with someone else so that is sort of like the advantage of renting that in the short term you're probably paying less compared to someone who's actually buying a property but in this situation that we're in in the pandemic we know that the interest rates are actually very low so bond repayments are fairly low depending of course on your credit score the term of your loan the value of a property but compared to you know renting at this point in time renting is a bit expensive and so when we come to you now um, just buying the property 
then the cost that you incur is mainly your bond repayments um, and also any maintenance, any insurance on the property will fall on you. And it's also another consideration like if you're thinking renting versus buying, when you buy a property, you need to also consider insurance, you need to consider maintenance, you also need to consider like your levies, um, the fees that you will pay, like your rates such as water, electricity, all those things fall on you. So you don't only consider the bond repayment but you need to consider all these extra things that you also need to sort of pay and then you can do your cost benefit analysis to say where am i at do i want to do i does it make sense for me to rent or does it make sense for me to actually buy a property at this point in time and then like with now the last option right that i did say i will sort of touch on in this video is the fact that when you are now in a position where perhaps you don't have a good credit score which i believe is sort of like a story for majority of people coming from university they will probably have a zero credit score or a four like me the one that i had you're probably going to be having like a very low credit score and that just means if you're going to be getting a mortgage they will charge you very high interest rate i'm talking 14 percent 20 percent depending like we say high relative to the prime rate which at this point in time is at seven percent so if you're getting something like 14 percent that's like double the prime rate it's considered to be actually very high so um if you are that person and you don't you haven't saved up enough money for a deposit because at the end of the day, if you want to be charged low interest, if you want to save on interest, you need to put out a deposit upfront for you to buy the property. Um, if you find that you haven't really had, you know, enough time to save because you're just coming out of university, then you can consider the last option, which is to rent to buy, right? So how this thing actually works is that you rent the property for two years, right? Where um, there are sort of chosen properties or approved properties that can actually, like you can arrange with the rent to to buy team i will put down the links in the description box so that if you're interested you can go ahead and read about it and chat to the people so you talk to these people and what actually happens is that they fix the price of the property for two years so in this two years you then begin to sort of actually um build up your credit score um, so that you get like pro approvals from banks and all of that you can save up for a deposit so that after the two years you still buy the property at the same price but then at this point in time now it will just continue like you will now then resume ownership of the property you will then pay up the burn, the bond repayments going forth so that is sort of like the high level um the high level sort of explanation of how things go when you rent to buy so at the end of the day the advantage is that we know property prices increase over time and so you sort of like a, you, you secure a home that you like or a, an apartment that you like and then you sort of save up for you to be able to buy that property or the apartment so if you look at it the third option is more like a combination of the two really because the first two years you are literally renting and then afterwards you now um, continue to just buy the property and repay the bond I mean there are other advantages i think the main focus of this video is just like with the costs because i feel costs are really like the main thing because they will change your finances in a drastic way but there are advantages and disadvantages for example if you're renting you can't just put nails on walls or change you know the 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 the, the, the property without consulting with the owner first there are restrictions in terms of how you can um change things or how you can rearrange stuff but if it's your own property then you can do whatever you like like you can change everything if you want to um, and also another thing is just that with renting you can actually just move around like you don't have to be fixated to one place you can move around you have the freedom to choose where to live but the minute you buy a property you are and you you buy it to actually live in it then that is sort of like you being tied to that thing you know for for the long term that you might decide in the long run to actually you know buy another property or rent the property out or whatever but essentially what i found um you know by just thinking at all of this is the fact that renting sort of makes sense in the short term where you are trying to yeah 
where you're still trying to sort yourself out and you're still trying to build your wealth and your finances and whatever, build your credit score. But in the long term, it's sort of like imagine renting for over 50 years, for example. Um, and at the end of the 50 years, after paying rent for 50 years, you then you don't have anything to show for it but if you buy the property then after 50 years then you're just like okay i've spent this money on my bond repayments but i have the property to show for it so it's something to think about to say that in the short term renting makes sense but in the long run does it really make sense but of course um to each their own because at the end of the day it depends on where you add as an individual and what your preferences are and what your financial standing is sort of looking like. But what I really love about owning property is the fact that in the long run, you can use that as a source of income. It can actually be used as one way for you to build your wealth. You know, I would have loved if my parents were rich enough to actually buy me a property so that I don't have to rent. I can just, you know, save up my money, build my wealth in other ways. But it's sort of like if you're in the lines of thinking about generating generational wealth, building worth, property can be a good investment, especially now when interest rates are low. But it's something that you have to think about. You don't just jump in and do it. It's something that you really need to invest time and look at your resources to see if it makes sense. Thank you so much for watching. And I know today my voice sounded weird all the way, but it's life. It is what it is. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I love you so much. Mwah. See you in the next video.